So now that we've defined and derived duration, we're going to have a look at another more intuitive way that it can actually be interpreted. And then we're going to go on and actually use uh, an example and calculate the duration of a bond. So here we've got our duration formula as we just worked out. And you may notice that there's two main parts to it. So there's the time until each cash flow is received. And then there's this fraction here, the cash flow discounted divided by the price. But what is the price? We know that the price, being the present value of the cash flows, is just the sum of all discounted cash flows. So another way you can actually think of this fraction is that it's the proportion of the total cost that is contributed by that individual cash flow. So we can actually simplify this down to the following. So we just say it's the sum of WI times TI, where WI is simply equal to the discounted cash flow divided by the price. And we can see that if we take the sum of all of these W's, then they will actually be equal to 1. And you can tell that this is the case because, well, what is the sum of all these W's? It's the sum of all of the discounted cash flows, which is equal to the price, divided by the price. What do you get? So the way that you can actually interpret this is that the duration is a weighted average. It's the weighted average time 